I was a stand-in for a colleague that was coming to India and we were supposed to go together and I ended up there by myself. Uh, First Source was doing a customer experience uh, consultancy and uh, kind of looking at how could we improve customer service and what was the current state, some competitive analysis. And uh, I ended up at First Source by myself without my colleague and ran through um, what you guys had produced. And it was it was really impressive. It was super comprehensive. Um, and not having been, not having taken on customer experience yet with, uh, with ETS, it was, it was a really, really good assessment. It was very complete, very thorough. I think though, um, what led to maybe some next steps on that was when first source went above and beyond. And so instead of just producing the output and saying, here's the output of the consultancy, um, I got to see kind of the inner workings. And I remember Ashish, um, after lunch had put me in a room and I'm not, I can be a nightmare. Uh, and what you guys did is you put me in a room with keyboard level customer care practitioners, no managers in the room, no executives in the room, no script. Um, just put me in a room with a bunch of people that do real work every day and said, ask them any questions and interact with them. And what I saw, um, having been in, you know, outsourcing and offshoring and global teams for a really long time, I, that's a huge risk. Um, but the questions that were asked, the answers that were provided really told me and really gave me a sense that the, not only the competency was there, but there was a culture within first source that was a little bit different. Uh, it wasn't the same kind of grind from a desk and you show up to a facility. There was a real camaraderie there and there was a lot of expertise in that room that was not driven by management and it was not scripted for a customer. It was just a free flowing conversation. So, you know, above the consultancy, there was a, a culture and just kind of an interaction model and a trust with the team uh, that I hadn't quite seen in other places. The specific areas of customer care, uh, we've been doing some AI engineers, uh, some psychometrics, which is a unique, it's unique to ETS, um, getting some psychometricians um, into uh, our, what we're calling the GCC or the Global Capability Center. Um, technical roles, uh, your traditional IT roles, um, some like business analyst type roles, um, and we're looking at doing some remote proctoring uh, roles as well, and that's getting ramped up. So a pretty pretty wide array of, of different traditional and non-traditional types of skills uh, that we're leveraging in the GCC. We definitely want to build a capability, you know, globally and in, in in a number of different places, but India specifically uh, is is a focus for us in our market, and we're looking for a way uh, to to establish a presence there. And it was a meeting in June, June, July, I think it was late June, early July, where we met with our CEO and and your CEO at the time. And um, it was kind of a challenge that was posed. Like we would like to have a a center set up uh, before the end of our fiscal year, which was uh, October 1st is when our fiscal year starts. And there was a commitment that was made in that room so that we can make it happen. And my experience is, you know, that's June, July, August, September. That, that's three months. Three months to establish. It, it takes three months to even start on the framework of a contract, much less have a functioning capability center with seats. Um, but First Source pulled out all the stops, found space, allocated space, fitted out space, got it working. And so we actually had a functioning you know, ready for ready for physical people to go and sit in and work uh, over the course of, of really just a couple months. Um, and we had access to, uh, you know, your real estate professionals, to talent acquisition professionals, to the HR professionals, to uh, logistics. I mean, just just that setup alone is is typically you know six months a year, eighteen months before you're like people ready, and it was ready in a matter of months. Uh, to start recruiting. 
I, I think the the growth and just um, uh, the growth that's built on trust and transparency. So uh, it, it feels like we're not transactional, and it's hard to see the the, the lines between. This is what we were looking for, right? It's hard that the lines between where the first source contractual remit begins and the non-contractual uh, partnership starts all kind of blended in together. Um, and I think that's a huge success. I mean, that's one of the keys when we think about something new or interesting. First source is oftentimes the one with, well, do, do we think first source can do something like this? Do you think we could help them with that? Uh, the other success is you guys are coming to us with things that we haven't thought of before. Um, we're a, we're an assessment company. So, you know, technology, AI, uh, you know, productivity, efficiency that is seen in other, in other areas, uh, in other geographies, in other, um, enterprises or, or, uh, industries, we don't get to see that, but what you guys bring is that insight proactively. And by the time we, by the time we have to ask for it, it's probably too late. And you guys have brought things like, in, in, like the different, different components of AI and different advances in AI and uh, different advances in technology and just some creative thinking has come to us even before we asked. I think uh, a great story was uh, the the virtual headsets. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't prompt that. <laughs> that was an idea that came out of the innovation center. Hey, what would it look like if people could take uh, an exam? not using a headset and pen and paper or a keyboard, what if it was completely bird, you know, complete virtual reality? And not only was it proposed, but we showed up and there was a full demo that was ready to go for us to kind of take a look and see, you know, what does that look like? What does that feel like? And it was real, it was tangible and it wasn't something that, that we asked for. Um, and so I think that's just, that's one example of the many things that on a routine basis we see, Hey, did you ever think of this? And so those insights that come from other industries and other geographies that we would never have access to, we have access to it and it's without being prompted. That's without being pushed. Um, it's just a, a, a sign of a partnership. You know, everything of value is built on trust. And so that trust that, that we have with you all, you know, there have been many examples where these relationships aren't always, you know, things happen in operations. Um, and when they come to, when we discover them, it's very transparent. We trust and know that the team is on top of it, taking care of it. We also know that, you know, in operations, we're told about things that are happening, uh, you know, in advance and proactively. Uh, so that trust, that transparency, that's, that's what I love that, that trust where, you know, from the time we started interacting, like, here's the team, go talk to them, interact with them. You don't need managers. You don't need executives. You don't need scripts. You don't need, uh, you know, questions, uh, that are, are pre-read and pre-vetted, but just, let's just work through it as if we were carrying the same badges and working on the same mission. And so, and I think we are regardless of the badge, um, and regardless of the location, regardless of where the the payroll gets processed, um, feels like it's, it's a single team. It feels like, uh, and then that trust is there. Mm -hmm.